Welcome to Generations. My name is Kiara. I'm Zach. And we are so excited about all the amazing things happening right here at Generations. We have a lot of awesome stuff coming up, guys, all of which you can find at our website at generations.church or in your bulletins in person, like our 21 Days of Fasting and Prayer going on right now. And also our team nights, which are every Thursday in January starting at 7 o'clock. That's right. We're also really excited about our third semester of Grow Groups. We definitely have a group for you, and you can sign up for them on our website. And guys, we are approaching our two-year anniversary.
Hey guys, welcome to Generations. My name is Kiara. I'm Zach. And we are so excited about all the amazing Hey guys, welcome to Generations. My name is Kiara. I'm Zach. And we are so excited about all the amazing things happening right here at Generations. We have a lot of awesome stuff coming up, guys. All of which you can find at our website at generations.church or in your bulletins in person, like our 21 days of fasting and prayer going on right now. And also our team nights, which are every Thursday in January starting at 7 o'clock. That's right. We're also really excited about our third semester of Grow Groups. We definitely have a group for you, and you can sign up for them on our website. And guys, we are approaching our...
Yeah, warm in here. Good morning. Good morning. It's snowing outside. It's not sticking, but we're here and we are sticking. Yes, amen. I am Pastor Becca and I will be your host this morning. We just want to welcome you. If this is your first time online, please drop us a comment in the section on Facebook. Let us know. We'd love to reach out and communicate with you. If this is your first time in the room, welcome back. 2022 is your first time in the room. We have a VIP table in the back. We'll be glad to meet you. But right now, we want to get back to worship. We want to grab together, get warm, stomp your feet, move about. It's okay, right? Amen? All right. So this morning, Father God, we just thank you. We thank you for the blessings that you just shower on us like snow. Father God, it is tender to the touch and melts and just, just fills us up. Father, we just ask that you just continue just work through us, Father God. Just be with us this morning. Keep us all safe. Keep us all warm. Just in the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay, I'll continue with our worship this morning. Thank you for the resurrected King. Amen. This morning.
only one, amen. When you worry, you worship. When you worry, just worship. Yesterday, I was in a room full of men, and usually when men get together, it ain't nothing wrong with it. We spend a little time, we talk a little football, hunting, fishing, all those things, and those are good. Don't get me wrong. It's a conversation starter. But maybe for me, I long for the day when the conversation starts about Jesus. But yesterday, we had three men come into a room and not planned, not scheduled. They didn't know. The man up on the platform said, I need three men to give their testimony. Nothing written down. And I can tell you, there was more than three men that raised their hand. He had to try to choose the three. God's doing something. Because men used to just sit in a room and just be men. The women, they, they, they share everything. That's just women. And that's true and it's funny, but it's true. But men, we have a hard time. I, I'm, I know, speaking for myself, it took a long time to tell my testimony, even though I was worshiping Jesus. But in order for me to truly worship him, I had to get that weight off my shoulders and share where I was at one time in my life. And so those three men, one talked about how he found God and he was of another religion and it was very ritual and the things that he did and they did and they thought that's all he needed to do was that and he was good. Another young man got up and spoke about, and this young man has started his own type ministry God's just incredible. He came in and said, I started a ministry on my own because sometimes the church fails to do some things. And so he's ministering to, to young men a couple times a week, stepping up. But his testimony was things that happened to him that I guarantee you, I'm pretty sure if it happened to me, I would never share it. And he dropped an atomic bomb on the room yesterday when he shared that testimony. God's up to something. And the third man, a local guy that we know from, from around here, shared a testimony. And this guy don't hardly even talk. I mean, you really got to pull hello out of him. And man, he shared a testimony of substance abuse. And it took his wife removing him from the, from the home for him to understand that he had to be delivered from this substance abuse. So I say this, that what we were doing yesterday was for young men from 17 to 33, so that maybe their story begins much earlier in their life than us old men. But it touched my heart yesterday to see grown men share what Jesus had done. And so that's why we gather. It's to thank him, to worship him, to glorify the king. He didn't carry that cross up to Calvary and stop along the way and say, I'm a little tired. Let me sit down for a little while or can I do this tomorrow? He went straight there for us. Still thinking of us as he hung on that cross with the two thieves next to him. So I'm telling you guys this morning, I was encouraged yesterday beyond. There were several guys in this room, and I know they agree, that we drove to Ackworth not planning to hear anything that we heard. And I know it encouraged one particular man in this room to share his testimony down the road. And I heard it, and it's, it's going to crumble some folks. So just know this more, I'd encourage you that God is up to something. He is doing something, and he's doing it right now. You agree with that? You agree with that? <laughs> so let's continue to worship this morning and thank God for who he is. Amen.
here, dear Lord, for just being in this room and for us to be able to just feel your presence, dear Lord. I just pray that each and every one here, dear Lord, would have our hearts and our minds open to you, dear Lord, that whatever this message is that you gave Adam, dear Lord, this morning, that we would just have open hearts to just welcome whatever that is, dear Lord. Please be with us all this morning as we leave here that we would have safe travels, dear Lord. But right now, let just bring us into your room, dear Lord. Thank you for everything you do for us and all the many blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys can be seated. Once again, I'm Pastor Becca, and we just want to welcome you here. If it's your first time online, please put a comment. Let us know. We'd love to connect with you. If you're the first time here in the room, we do have a VIP table in the back. We have a gift for you. We would love to see you after service. I will be back there. If you want to just come up, have a you know quick conversation, whatever. But I will be in the back. We have a lot going on. There's a ton going on. One of the ways that we communicate is through online. It's generations.church. You can find everything you need to know right there. Or you can look in the bulletins, which are out front. Grow groups are still going on. You can still sign up. We have a ton of people signed up. Space is actually filling up. It's a good thing. Yes. So definitely get out there. If you haven't signed up, do it today before you leave. It'll just make you feel warmer, right? Amen. Generations, we believe in generosity. We have just, we're continuing with our generosity. If you want to give online, you can give online at generations.church or we have a bucket here in the back. We're going to continue with worship this morning. Pastor Adam, Pastor Adam, Adam, (laughs) we're going to speak it into existence. (laughs) That song was good. (laughs) It's going to come up in a few minutes, but again, we just want to welcome you this morning. Father God, we just thank you. We thank you for the presence that you bring. We thank you for the vessels that we are, that we can empty ourselves, fill ourselves with you so that you can say what you want to say in this morning. And Father, we ask all of this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you guys so much. Let's give it up for the worship team one more time. It's good to worship together. It's good to worship together. Is this in the middle? That's going to be where it goes. That's cool. <laughs> well, it's good to see you guys in the house this morning. I don't know if you realized, but it is cold outside. It is wet. It is rainy. It's gross. It's windy. It's so windy. Actually, I was telling somebody earlier this morning, I almost lost my glasses getting into my car because the wind was like, and I had like my hands full. And so my glasses kind of went like this and I had to do this weird like, I'm going to save them with the side of my face thing. And so I almost lost my glasses. And I'm the kind of blind that if I were to have lost my glasses, I would have had to have gone back to my apartment, gotten my contacts, put them in so that I could then find my glasses to then put them back on. That's the kind of blind that I am. Um, Yeah. Yeah. You guys, some of you guys feel me. Um, Have you ever tried to pick up sunlight off the floor? Okay, yes. I've done that before. When I first woke up, the sun was like coming through the window and I didn't have my glasses on. I was like, what is this? And I'm like trying, I did like the claw. Like, I can't, I can't get it. And then I finally was like, what is happening? And I put my glasses, I was like, sunlight. I tried to pick up sunlight. That's what I did. So those of you who have been waiting for it to get colder, I just want you to know I'm holding you personally responsible for what's happening out there. That's on you. I did not do that. Um, raise your hand really quickly if you, if you like the cold weather better. If you like cold weather better. Okay, I'm going to tell you why you're wrong. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, so hot, hot weather, who likes it hot? Okay, all right, I'm going to tell you why you're wrong. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I am, I'm the type of person that when it comes to seasons, my favorite part of winter is when it's over. And then when summer gets here, my favorite part of summer is when it's over. Right? I can't make up my mind. That's kind of how I live my life. So maybe you're like me. Maybe you're normal. I don't know. But it's good to have you guys in the house this morning. We are continuing in our counter culture series. Pastor Chris kicked us off last week, and we're kind of talking about, um, you know, in, in Romans 12 too, the Lord tells us not to be conformed to the image of this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that's kind of the idea behind where we're going to spend a couple of weeks here. Um, because when you come into the kingdom of God, how many of you know that sometimes the way that you thought things were going to work is not always necessarily how it turns out. You know, you have these, these expectations, these, these preconceived notions of what life with Jesus is going to be like, and then you start getting into his word, and you're like, I 
don't know if that makes sense. But like, you know, you just start to see may- maybe, you know, there's some things I didn't quite understand quite as well. And so we're kind of talking about some of those things. Uh, we started with uh, cancel culture last weekend. And how many of you guys are thankful and grateful that the Lord has taken everything that could have been used to disqualify you and he's already taken care of it, right? Especially if you're like me and you notice that the older that you get, the longer that list seems to become. <laughs> you're like, I'm glad that that's not completely on me to deal with. But we're going to continue with that idea of, um, you know, some of these things that become a little bit different once we start living life with the Lord. And one of them, I think one of the areas um, is is the way that we view our lives and how we choose to live them, okay? And when I say that, I think um, a successful life can mean different things to different people depending upon where we go to really get that definition of success. Does that make sense? And so, you know, some people you ask them, like, well, what does a successful life mean to you? And they'll say something to the effect of, like, well, I, you know, if my life is filled with happiness and joy and all these pleasant things, like, to me, that would be considered a successful life. And then you could ask somebody else the same question. They say, well, if by the time my life is over, you know, I've accumulated all of these things, if I can leave them to, to future generations, if I could set my family up in a particular way, like that is a successful life to me. And so we start to notice pretty quickly that if I were to pull this room, you know, we might have some of, the, some of those same answers. We might have different answers even within the context of the church, right? And so, um, you know, when we talk about a successful life, um, success has always been like, what you did in comparison to what you were supposed to have done, right? That's the definition of success. That's how we compare. That's how we decide whether or not something is successful. Here was the goal. Here was the target. How far away were we, you know? And so when we come to this kind of a question, why don't we see what Jesus has to say on the subject, right? That's a good idea. And so, um, you know, Jesus kind of approaches this, and he says something Um, in the Gospels. I'm reading out of Luke uh, chapter 9, starting in verse 23. It says, Then he said to them, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will have gained it. Okay? And so I want to spend just a few moments kind of unpacking that idea in the time that we have left. So I'm going to pray, and I want to talk just a little bit about the life that we said we always wanted, okay? So, Father, we love you. We thank you for this time together, Lord. We thank you for time just to worship. We thank you for time to just focus on you, Lord. And so, God, we ask that you would just come in these next few moments, God, in the time that we have left, Lord, that you would deposit something within us. God, if there's anything that's going on in our lives, God, if there's anything that's distracting us right now, we ask that you would just help us to put that to the side just for these next few minutes, God, that we would focus on you. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would use me, accomplish your purposes this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So (laughs) I thought of something when I was kind of preparing for this message. You know, we're talking about moments where you start to learn that maybe some things don't actually work the way that you thought they did, right? And I remembered this story I, I was I was young, like, you know, very small. Like, I, <laughs> you remember when you got the first time you actually had access to money as a child, and you were like, oh, "This is gonna be good," you know? Like, you were so excited. Didn't matter how much it was, you were gonna buy something. It could have been something you didn't want, something you didn't like, but as long as you were the one who could buy it, that was a good day, right? And this is the story. Like, this is my first memory with money, right? And so it wasn't a lot of money. I don't even remember what I bought, to be honest. It was probably something, you know, very age appropriate. So, you know, a toaster, you know, um, knitting needles, you know how kids are. And so I remember being in the, the checkout line and I finally got up there and I had like, you know, my $5 $5 bill or whatever it was. And I was like, yes. And I like threw it down. I was like, that's right. I'm doing this. You know, I was so excited. I was so proud of myself. And so, you know, the cashier responded in the way all cashiers do with purchases. They go, thank you for your money. Here are your things. Have a nice day. And I was like, oh, 
she forgot to give me change. And then I turned to my parents who were with me. I was like, she didn't give me my change. It must be her first day, you know, her first time doing cashier things. And I was like, she didn't, she didn't give me my change. And then my mom was like, well, she didn't give you change because you spent the amount of money that was required for these things. Like, there's no leftover money. And so I was walking into the situation thinking change was like just a part of the transaction. Like, you give them money, you get stuff, they give you back money, and then you leave with money and stuff. That's not how it works, in case you were not aware of that. And I remember feeling so, like, I don't even know the right, like, d defeated, almost embarrassed that I didn't understand how money worked as a small child. And I was like, so you mean to tell me that she's not going to give me money for giving her money? He's like, that's exactly what I'm telling you. I was like, I don't like this. And nothing's changed. I still don't like money and, and not getting change. But I remember sitting there going, okay. So, like, I, I mean, I was excited that I got my stuff. But I was like, I thought I understood how money worked. And I, <laughs> I did not understand how money worked. And we have these moments, like I said, when we join and, and we, we become part of the kingdom of God. And we start to realize that, that our understanding of how some of these things work is incomplete or that our perspective needs to be aligned a little bit. Um, and we talk about having, you know, this life that we've always wanted. And, and you know, for a lot of us, we would say, like, I, I want a life of significance. I want a life of purpose. I want a life that, that, you know, by the time it's over, it will have mattered that I lived it. You know, that's kind of where we all land, and we say it our own way, but that's the core of what it is. And the truth of that is that that's the same kind of life that the Lord wants us to have, too. You know, we're not necessarily differing in opinion on that sort of thing. He actually says it this way in John 10. He said, I've come so that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So in the mind of Jesus, the goal has always been life more abundantly. Okay? And so he invites us, you know, to this life that we've always wanted. But then he tells us that the only vehicle that's going to get us there is probably not the one we would have expected or chosen for ourselves, okay? And, and he invites us to life via death, which just sounds like it doesn't make any sense. Like, if you were to ask somebody, well, what's the opposite of life? They would say, right. And so you're like, okay, so the thing I want, I have to do the exact opposite of that. I have to die to live. That doesn't make sense, Jesus. Like, are you sure you understood the question? You know, that's just kind of how we act. And, we, you know, we, we look back on, on Luke 9, and I'm going to read it one more time. He says, then he said to them all, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will have gained it. Okay? And so I want to kind of transition here, and we're going to spend the rest of the time we have kind of on that passage of Scripture. Um, because I think, and maybe you have an experience that's similar to this, when it comes to somebody newly joining, you know, the faith or becoming part of the church or starting a life with Jesus, we don't, we don't lie to them, but we don't always give them the fullness of the picture. Does that make sense? We kind of paint this, you know, Sunday school campfire, kumbaya, Jesus loves you, everything's great. Like, that's kind of the picture that we get. And Jesus does love you. And there are moments that are, 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 you know, that calm, like you just feel the embrace of the Lord. Like, that's part of the package. But that's one side of the coin, right? And when we talk about those sorts of things and we leave out some of the information that would give a more clear picture of what life is like when you, when you live it the way Jesus has, has asked of us, I wonder if we're maybe not doing our part, and I wonder if maybe we're not setting people up in a way that we can have longevity with the Lord, okay? And so the first part of this verse says... If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, okay? So stopping right there, we're just going to go piece by piece. Denying yourself means that where you once had rights, you now have responsibility, 
okay? And again, we don't always talk like that. And when we don't, <laughs> and then that responsibility starts to come at someone who's new, they don't know what to do with it. They were like, you didn't tell me I'd have to do stuff. You didn't tell me I'd have to participate. You know, I thought Jesus just loved me. And I was like, well, yeah, but also, <laughs> you know. And so, you know, we start to talk about, okay, we once had rights. Now we have responsibility. One of the rights we used to maybe have was comfort. We used to feel like, well, I, I have a right to be comfortable. And anything that challenges our comfort, we don't like it. We don't want it. Don't bring it up. Don't even consider, you know, d- just d- get out. You know, I don't, I don't want... I don't want your your conversations if they challenge my comfort. And so we have to get to the point where we trade our right for comfort for our responsibility that sometimes instead of comfort, we have costly obedience. When was the last time you were costly obedient? When was the last time that you chose something when it was in front of you and you said, okay, well, I can either have the comfort that I want or I can respond with the obedience that I pledged? That's an interesting question to unpack. Another right that we once had Safety. I have the right to feel safe. I have the right to make sure that however I live my life, whatever choices I make, whatever choices I don't make, they do not infringe upon my safety. And yet, when I read stories about the people who are the most up close to Jesus, and who had the most access and are the most, you know, headliners, so to speak, I wonder if we ask them how safe they usually felt, how they would respond. Because I don't imagine that people who ended up being, you know, stoned and, 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 and beheaded and crucified upside down or burned alive in oil, that doesn't sound like something I would attach the word safety to. And so where we once had the right of safety, sometimes we have to change that for what can be considered sometimes risky servanthood. And so if we're, if we're making a shift to what could be considered risky servanthood, How are we doing with that? You don't have to answer to me. You will have to answer. <laughs> but you don't have to answer to me. But how well do you serve? How well do you serve when it costs a little bit of that comfort and that safety and that feeling that you want to protect? How well do we serve in those moments? We once have rights, now we have responsibility. We used to have the right of preference. I remember when I was in college, somebody asked me, these are the kind of questions you get when you go to a Bible college and you're around people like this all the time. But somebody asked me if I were to label what most often derails a church, what would I say? And to bring you into my thought process, I think immediately my first thought was, okay, well, well sin, that's a big one. Like, that was one of the, the immediate thought processes. And as I began to process, and I don't, I don't normally answer quickly. For those of you that know me, I like to have time with a question. And the more I thought about it, and the more I kind of viewed, um, you know, what the word of the Lord says and what, what um, you know, my own experiences looked like, I, I began to really realize that I, th- I think even more so than sin, preference is out there 
and what we would prefer to do or how we would prefer something to be or how we would like to have the vision accomplished becomes far more important than what the Lord is even doing. And we start to, well, I, I have the right to feel this way. Do you? Because, like, we signed up for the same thing. And the way that the Lord talks to me sometimes, I've gotten a lot of, of those kinds of promptings where the question kind of becomes, okay, are you more concerned with getting your way or are you more concerned with what I am trying to do being accomplished? Because sometimes you can't pick both. And are you so stubborn <laughs> that you would rather worship your own opinion over me and what I'm putting in front of you as a church or what I'm putting in front of you as a team or what I'm putting in front of you? And so this idea of preference is huge. We used to have a right to our preference, and now we have the responsibility at times to submit and to surrender for the sake of what the Lord wants to do, okay? And so that's that first part. Denying yourself means where we once had rights, we now have responsibility. Second part, going back, Luke 9, okay? We just, he must deny himself, second part, and take up his cross daily. Take up his cross daily. Okay, taking up our cross means that we become participants in the substance of Jesus' death, okay? We are connecting to the core of what that was. So what does that mean? That means we live our lives to echo the purpose that he came and died for, okay? And when we do that, we have to remind ourselves that if he gave up his life so that others could find life through his death, it makes what you and I are to do pretty clear, I think. I think if Jesus was willing to do it, what reason could we possibly have to say that that's not, that's not for me, you know? And so when we talk about this, I, I wrote in my notes here, I cannot have a life that is about others when I am the only thing I think about when I make decisions. So the things I'm willing to do, the things that I'm not willing to do, I can't make those decisions with myself being the only person that factors into the choices. Okay, that's not a life that, uh, Zach and, and, and Chris, you guys can go ahead and come back up. Um, you know, those are not, those are, not cho those, those are choices that I, I decided to give up. Okay, and so the understanding of a kingdom is that we do thing, things the king's way. Okay, and, and, and if you are someone in the room or watching online and you have said yes to this, I would like to remind you that you said yes to this. And I'm not here to, to point fingers. I'm not here to try to condemn you. I'm here to remind you that you said yes to this. If you're watching online, you said yes to this. And when you signed up, you signed up to do things the king's way. And you signed up for responsibilities in the place of rights that you used to have. There was a poem that I that I am familiar with. I don't know the entire poem, but there's a line in it that I think illustrates kind of the core of what I'm talking about. And and, and it was talking about kind of the juxtaposition of these two different lives. One person was living it the way that they felt honored the Lord. Kind of this way that we're, we're talking about this morning. And then the other person 
was just out there making their decisions. You know, they were kind of the other side of that coin. And there was a line that repeated over and over and over in that poem, and it simply said, others may, but I may not. And so this morning, I want to give us a chance to respond to the Lord. And so as we finish this part, there's one last part of that scripture at the very, very end. So we talked about denying yourself. We talked about taking up the cross. And there's this last piece that says, follow me. Whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will have gained it. And so follow me that portion just means that we trust the Lord enough that we relinquish control of the direction that we move and the path that's been chosen. And that can be hard. Especially when you're a planner (laughs) and you're a thinker and you have backup plans for your backup plans and then one day you wake up and realize that you did not include the Lord in any of that process. And he's trying to, I know I, I, need, I need you over here. Because what you don't know that I do know is if you live your life like that, at the end of it, this is where you're going to want to end up anyway. And I'm trying to get you there. But you're not trusting me to do it. And so follow me, even if you don't know where I'm going, even if you had another plan, follow me. So if everyone will just take a minute and just do whatever you need to do to focus on the Lord, if that's closing your eyes, if that's bowing your head, whatever that looks like for you. I just want to give us a moment because I want to talk to to two different people, two different groups of people, whether you're in the room, whether you're watching from home online. Um, Maybe you would say, "I I don't have that relationship with Jesus. But that kind of life that you describe, that life that's about purpose, and significance and life that matters. That's what I've been looking for. That's what I want. That's what my soul longs for. I know I would not be doing my job this morning if I didn't give you a chance to to pursue that. And so if you're in the room or if you're online, we're not going to embarrass you. We're not going to ask you to come up. We're not going to, we're not going to do any of that. This is between you and the Lord. But the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart, that you'll be saved. Okay? And there's nothing special in the words. It's not the prayer that saves you. The Lord saves you in response to your belief that he can and that he will. So right now, if that's you, You can just pray something like this. Jesus, I know that I've sinned. Lord, I know that because of my sin, I'm destined to a life forever without you. But Lord, I know that you told me that you can forgive my sins and that I can live forever with you. And Lord, that's what I want. I want to be close to you. I want a life with you, Lord. So right now I repent. I turn away from my sin. I put those things at your feet. And I say that I believe that you love me, that you have saved me, that you've redeemed me. And so Lord, from this point on, I belong to you. 
I'm turning around, and I'm moving where you put me. In Jesus' name, amen. And so if you prayed that prayer for the very first time, we want to celebrate with you. If you're in the room, if you're online, I would encourage you just to let somebody know. You know, we want to, again, we're not going to embarrass you, but we want to celebrate with you. That's a big deal. That is a very big deal. And we're proud of you. We're excited to have you in the family. So welcome. And the second group of people, maybe you would say, I've already done that. I've committed my life to the Lord. That's not a new thing for me. But maybe you would say, I need some element of refocusing. I need to return in some way. That life you described, maybe I was once living it. But I'm not sure that that description fits me today. So if that's you, and you're in the room, and you're online, today is a great day to come back. Today is a great day for rededication. Today is a great day to turn and to come back. And so if that's you, this moment is yours. Whether you're in the room, whether you're online, same thing. Just take a moment in whatever way you're comfortable with. And maybe you'll, you would pray something like this. And say, Jesus, Lord, I love you. And I know the kind of life that I signed up for. Or maybe I didn't, but I'm learning the kind of life that I signed up for. And I think that the way that I've been living has not measured up to what I know you've asked of me. And so, Father, right now, I just ask that you would forgive me for the moments where I've missed it, for the times where I felt like my rights were more important than what you'd asked me to do. For the times when I was stubborn and I worshipped my opinion more than I decided to go after what you put in front of me. So Lord, right now, I'm coming back as well. I'm coming back for a life that might be costly, that might be occasionally uncomfortable, because I know in the end, that's where the fulfillment comes from. I know that what I'm looking for is not going to be found anywhere else. And so Jesus, I return to you this morning. Use me, continue to shape me, continue to mold me. Lord, we return, we refocus. We've always been yours. And this morning, we just take a moment and we remind ourselves of that. Jesus, we take a moment and through your word, God, we're reminded that this is the life that we said we always wanted. So Jesus, continue to work on us even as we close out this service, Lord. We know that your involvement and your moving in our hearts is not confined to moments where we're in these walls. And so, Lord, I pray that if there's anybody in this room or anybody who's watching online that needs to talk to somebody, that's got some stuff that they need to unpack, that's got some stuff that they need, they need advice, they need somebody to walk with them, Lord, I ask that you would just give them the courage to find somebody before they leave. To remind them, God, that you never expected them to do this on their own. 
and that this is a building full of people who don't want that either. Lord, so just give us courage to be honest about where we are because we know that that honesty and that connection in your church is part of the process that you use to bring that healing and to bring that wholeness, God. So Lord, we ask all these things in your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It's hard to follow up. <laughs> if today was a day that you needed someone to talk to, again, I'm going to be in the back. If you're online, you can send us an instant message. You can put a comment in there. Let us follow back up with you. It's all about moving forward, right? It's all about accepting what God has done and moving forward. So if that is you today, as Adam said, Adam will be here. I will be in the back. If you need someone to talk to, Chris is here. Mario's here. Mike's here. Mike's here. Chris is here. Did I get all the Chris's and Mike's? <laughs> Come and talk to somebody. Don't leave here unchanged. Don't leave here alone. We just hope today that you are safe. Stay warm wherever you are. Drive carefully when you're leaving here today. No speed demons. No heartbreaking. Somebody from up north is going to come teach us all how to drive. <laughs> because none of, if you're southern, we don't know. <laughs> but we hope this week that you have a phenomenal week. God bless you and have a great week. You are all dismissed.